So Blender version 5.0 is just recently released, and in this update, the adaptive subdivision is finally out of experimental mode. So in previous versions of Blender, whenever you wanted to use the adaptive subdivision feature, you always had to go up here to this feature set and you had to change it from supported to experimental and then you could access the adaptive subdivision settings on the subdivision surface modifier. But in the new Blender version of 5.0, it's not in experimental mode, so whenever you add a subdivision surface modifier to an object, you can just check mark the adaptive subdivision. So in this video, I'll show you how to set up adaptive subdivision and how to use it. Now before we start, you might be wondering what adaptive subdivision is. Well, let's say that you have a really large scene with maybe a big landscape scene and maybe it has a dirt texture or maybe you have a large brick wall like this here. Well, with this brick wall, I am using a displacement texture so you can see with the displacement texture, the bricks are actually being popped out of the mesh. Well, in order to make those bricks being popped out of the mesh, you need to subdivide the mesh so it has more geometry. Well, for a really large scene, like maybe you have a really large brick wall or you're rendering a big landscape scene, you don't actually need tons of detail where it's farther away from the camera because if I go into the camera view you can see that you're going to want to have more detail right here where it's close to the camera because the camera can see these bricks in more detail but way over here you don't actually need that much detail but if you're not using the adaptive subdivision you're going to have to add like a subsurf modifier or subdivide the mesh and the entire thing is going to have lots of geometry and be very detailed and so that's going to lag the blender file it's going to add a lot more memory and your computer might run out of memory and it might also crash blender while it's trying to render well, with the adaptive subdivision, it's going to subdivide it more when the camera's closer up, but then where it's farther away, the subdivision is going to be less. And so that way it'll lower the memory size of the render, and it should render faster and be less laggy. So I'm just going to select everything and I'm just going to delete everything and then I'll go to the add menu and I'm going to add a plane. I'm also going to add a camera and I'll just hit control alt number zero to place the camera to our view. And then also definitely make sure that you're using the cycles rendering engine because the adaptive subdivision doesn't work in Eevee. It's a cycles only feature. I'm now going to go into edit mode of the plane and I'm going to hit control E and I'm going to click on subdivide and then I'll hit control E, subdivide that again, control E and subdivide that again. So you can see it's a little bit subdivided, but we're now going to add a lot more detail with a subsurf modifier. So let's go to the modifier properties. Let's add modifier and we're going to search for subdivision surface and we'll just add a subdivision surface. Now you can see the edges are kind of rounding and I don't want that. So I'm going to change the Catmull Clark to simple instead. So it subdivides it, but it doesn't smooth it or round it. Let's now go shoot to the shading tab and I'll go into the camera view and let's go into the rendered viewport mode. And then just to set up some quick lighting, I'm gonna scroll my mouse right over here and we'll click on the arrow and I'm gonna turn off the scene lights and scene world so we can use the built-in HDRIs. So we'll select the plane and we're gonna add a new material. And then I've enabled the Node Wrangler add-on in the user preferences. So I'm gonna select the principal shader and I'll hit Control Shift T. Now I'm going to be using this brick texture from Ambient CG, so it's the brick 022, and I'm downloading the 4K JPEG version, so link is in the video description if you do want to follow along and use the same textures. So I'm going to select the color, and then hold down the control key and select the displacement, and the normal GL, and the roughness. You don't need these other textures, but you do need a displacement texture. So we'll click on principal texture setup. So you can see now it's set it up properly, so we have the base color set to sRGB, the roughness set to non-color, the displacement also set to non-color, and the normal set to non-color going through a normal map and then also the displacement is going through the displacement node. Now you can't actually see the displacement working that's because I need to hit the N key to open up the side panel and I need to go to the options tab and go to settings and I need to change the displacement to displacement and bump and then I'll close the side panel. So now it is working, but I need to turn up the scale. So if I turn up the scale, that's going to make it stronger. Now the problem with this is that because it has so low topology, it's just really lumpy and that really doesn't look good. So we need to add more detail. So what I can do is go over here to the modifiers and I can turn up the subdivision that we added. So I'm going to turn up the subsurf and I'll turn them all the way up to a six. So it's really high detail. And then I can turn the scale down. So let me just turn this down to like a maybe 0 0.05. So it's not quite as strong, maybe a little bit stronger. So like a 0 0.08. So you can see that what the brick are doing. So now if you take a look at the bricks, you can see because of the displacement texture, the bricks are actually popping out of the mesh. But the problem with this is that the camera doesn't actually need tons of detail way over here. Because if I zoom way over here to the very end, these bricks here are really quite detailed, but the camera is going to be way over here. So the camera does need a lot of geometry right here, so it actually looks high detail, but way over here, the detail could actually be a lot smaller. 
So let's turn on the adaptive subdivision. So just click on the check mark there and we're going to open it up. Now, the first thing that you'll notice is there is viewport and render. So what you're going to see in the viewport is actually not the same as what it's going to render. So it's actually going to render with a lot higher detail. So these current settings are actually going to be way too high. This would be way too detailed because if you zoom in closely, it's actually already pretty detailed. But then you can see the viewport level is actually eight, but it would actually render with one. And so one is actually going to be way more detailed. So what I actually want to do is change this pixel size maybe I'll turn this up to like a four so that it's not quite as detailed but then you can see what it renders it's going to render with four even though the viewport is 32. So just to show you I've done a quick render so you can see here it is in the viewport so if you take a look at the viewport it looks pretty blobby and not that good but if you zoom in here to the bricks with the render the final render looks a lot more detailed. So if you change the pixel size to a smaller value it's going to be more detailed so basically think of it as all of the subdivision faces being a lot smaller or if if you turn the pixel size up it's going to be bigger. Now you can also change the viewport and render settings. So if I go up here to the render properties I'm going to open up this subdivision tab and you can see there is the dicing rate render and the viewport. So if you wanted these to be both exactly the same so you can actually see what the render is going to look like you could turn both of these to the same value of one. And now what I could do is go back here to the modifiers and you can see now the viewport is set to 10 because the pixel size is set to 10, but the render is also going to be set to 10. So now this is what it would actually look like in the render. However, this could start to get kind of laggy in the scene because if I want to make this very detailed, maybe I'll turn it down to like a two, so it's going to be even more detailed. And you can see Blender is kind of frozen, so I can't actually really do anything. It's not actually rendering it, and that's because the detail was so high. So it might eventually load up, but it might also run out of memory and crash Blender or just not be able to render. So that's why using a higher viewport level is really useful so that you can move around your scene and it will be really fast in the viewport but then when it actually renders it'll render with a higher value. So I'm going to go back over here to the render properties and I'm going to turn the viewport to 4 but then I'll turn the render to 1. So this way it's going to render with about 4 times the quality. So I'll go back here to the modifiers and then for the pixel size I think I'll just turn this to like a 4. Now we can actually move the camera around while in the rendered mode to make sure the adaptive subdivision is working. So you can see if I move the camera in really close and then click to place it there you can see it just adapted. So if I just zoom in closer and then click there, you can see it adapts after you move it, and so it looks higher resolution. So what I'm going to do is use the fly mode by hitting the shift tilde, so the shift tilde button, and then I can use the W S A D to kind of move around, and I'm just going to fly right over here and fly to the very end. So you can see way over here at the very end, it looks very low quality, but that's because the camera is farther away. Well, once you place the camera, it's going to adapt to the render. So if I just now click to place the camera, you can see it immediately adapted, and now the brick looks a lot higher quality. Now I'm going to jump back to the shading tab and I want to show you the actual wireframe. What I'm going to do is select the brick texture and hit shift A for the add menu and I'm going to search for the wireframe node and I'm going to put the factor into the surface so we can actually see what it's going to look like. Now what I need to do is change the size here because it's way too big. So I'm going to change this size here on the wireframe to a 0 0.001. So now you can see if I kind of zoom out here you can see because the camera was looking really close at this part of the brick it's going to be very subdivided. But then way over here you can see the subdivision is very low because the camera can't even see it. So every time I move the camera around it's going to update. So if I zoom in really close right there, now you can see the adaptive subdivision updates and it's going to be a lot more detailed and it's subdividing the mesh where the camera can see it. And so this would even work for an animation. So if you're maybe animating like an environment scene or something, every time it renders a frame it's going to adapt the subdivision to where the camera is. So that's how you can use the adaptive subdivision in Blender 5.0. So I hope you found the video helpful and thank you for watching. And if you'd like to learn more about the Blender 5.0 new features, I've been recently posting some videos on my YouTube channel covering the different new features and updates of Blender 5.0, so you can definitely check out those videos on my YouTube channel. And if you'd like to learn about some of the new modifiers in Blender version 5, I just recently posted a video covering the new modifiers, so a link to that will be in the video description. And you can also check out my modifiers for beginners tutorial, where I cover all the main modifiers, like the mirror modifier, the subsurf modifier, the array modifier, and other common modifiers which you'll commonly use in Blender. But I hope you found this helpful and thanks for watching.